Hi, I would like to show you how to use your own custom traits in the simulation of genetic and phenotypic data using Plinker. I've already made a video um, how to uh, simulate uh, phenotypic and genotypic data in Plinker uh, using a lot of the, the custom traits I have. So this is a vignette, it's called Create Demo Asoc Cute Prompts. Uh, which demonstrates how to um, how to simulate these associate uh, these quantitative trait associations. Um, so you can create those parameters, and just creating those parameters, uh, which is a pad and a map file, so a pedigree file uh, contains the genetic data, and the pedigree and the map file contains the genetic mapping, which is like where are the SNPs, uh, and there's also a phenotypic table which contains the phenotype. And this function create demo a sock cute params creates uh, all three, all three of those. Um, so you can use uh, so you can use the a sock cute function to detect these genetic associations that you've just simulated. And it's a very flexible function. You can put in traits. You can put it in random trait. Um, you can put it in a random trait and then for five individuals um, or different minor allele frequencies. Also tri allelic. This is a triallelic trait. Uh, we can do a quadallelic trait as well. We can use an additive trait. We can use an epistatic trait. Uh, we can use multiple traits, like two random traits, um, a random and an associated and an additive trait. Um, so these are all standard uh, traits, standard relations between a genotype and a phenotype. Um, and what I'm going to show here is to create your own custom trait. So there's a vignette called Create Custom Trait, um, which shows you how to do exactly that. Um, so we're going to create our custom trait, and let's take a look what the, what, what the trait exactly does. So we'll first use a trait that's determined on exactly one SNP. So we'll be creating a table of um, SNVs, uh, single nucleotide variants, like this. This is also used by Plinker, this format. Um, so we have one, two, three, four individuals. Uh, they are deployed and at one location, uh, and that's at SNP location one, um, they, have, uh, they have these four nucleotides and the, o the other four individuals have these nucleotides at the second spot. So we SNP one and SNP two, A and B. So these are the haplotypes, the columns are the haplotypes. So if we have one SNP, uh, we'll have two haplotypes in a deployed organism. So this is how, uh, how this is the genetic data, how it looks like. And um, what I'm doing here is I'm going to show uh, an existing function called calc additive phenotype values on that SNVS, on the single nucleotide variants. Um, I, I pretty printed a bit, so I put these the, the results of that in a, in, in a column here called phenotype. And you see that this function uses this table to create these values. And the function is actually tested um, on, on, on two of these uh, tables if it gives as much phenotypes as there are individuals. So now we're going to write our first custom function in which the phenotype is random. So this is how the function looks like. Uh, let's see if we can zoom in a bit. Yeah, so this is how the function look like a bit. It's a very simple function, so we uh, call the function run a phenotype. It's a function that works on single nucleotide variants, um, which is exactly uh, this table. Plinker will, will use this format. And what it does, it draws a random number from a uniform distribution, and it draws as much random numbers as there are rows in the, in the table. So in this case, there are four rows, there are four individuals, so it will draw four random numbers uh, and that's how it determines the phenotype. So actually it doesn't care about genetic data at all, it just produces as much random numbers as there are individuals. So it doesn't actually read the nucleotides, but that's a good, but still it's a first, it's a custom function. Um, there's a f within Plinker there is a function called check calc phenotype function that works on your function that checks if it's valid. Uh, so it does so by supplying uh, two of those tables. One is this table, 
uh, and another one to see if the input and output is all correct. It will give an error here if it's if your custom function is incorrect or when you run plain card, it will do the same thing. Uh, but this vignette built, so that means uh, this was a valid function. Um, so let's use this function just for demonstrational purpose. So I'm going to make a table of our uh, single nucleotide variance table. I just copy it. I add a column called phenotype based on the results of run a phenotype. And here we have our random phenotypes again shown in a table. All right, so that's all fine. We cannot make random phenotypes. Let's do some more biology by using an additive phenotype. So we're going to write a custom function uh, in which we state that the phenotype is additive based on the genotype. So this is how the function looks like. So again, it takes the single nucleotide variance table um, and uh, it takes the row sums of the SNVs of the SNPs that are not A. So for example, in this table, um, here, the, this row sum will be zero because there are two A's, which, are, which is not a non-A. Here we have one non-A, here we have one non-A, and here we have two non-A's. Um, so the row sums will be zero, one, one, and two, respectively. So there will be coming four values out of this, uh, because there are four rows, there are four individuals. Um, these values, 0, 1, 1, and 2, are multiplied by 0.5. Uh, you can use any other value there. And um, from those results, so this will result in 0, 0.5, 0 0.5, 1. It will add 10 to it, and that's the additive phenotype. So these phenotypic values, um, I like that they, that they avoid being mixed up with case control values. So that's where... Uh, Case control because Plink cannot like Plink not Plinker Plink cannot distinguish between between phenotypic values that are let's say one and two with case control values which are always one and two. There's no flag to change that, so we have to adapt our phenotypes a bit uh, by let's say for example having them start at ten. And um, well, we can check our, fin our function. Well, it works. It's it's great. It's tested by Plinker, uh, and here we're going to apply it again. Uh, add it as a column to our uh, genetic data and we can see that this nicely works as expected. So now we're going to use another custom function which the phenotype is recessive. Um, and what we're going to do if the genotype is T and T, so if the genotypes are two T's, um, only then uh, we'll have a value of, uh, of 11 in this case. So it counts if, uh, if the number of T's, if the well, it just says, um, so it counts the number of T's in each row. And if that matches the number of columns, uh, in that case, um, all, the, the, all the T's in that row are T's. If that's, that this is the same thing, uh, then this will evaluate to true if that's the case. And then uh, the phenotype will be 10 plus 0 if, this is n if it's not only T's and, and 11 if it is only T's. Um, also here we check the function, it works nicely. Now I'm going to put it in a table like this and you can see that this nicely works as expected. Next step is now we're going to use two SNPs uh, instead of one. Um, this works exactly the same, but here we I can also show off some more complex functions. So now we'll be using uh, the SNVs table, the single nucleotide variance table, um, with two loci. Uh, so this is how it looks like. It has 16 uh, genotype combinations because, uh, well, it's nicely ordered to be uh, 16 uh, in all four in all combinations of two two nuclei nucleotides here, two here, two here, two here. So two times two times two times two, 16. Uh, so here we have all the possible 16 genotypes, um, assuming that there are only A and T in the population. So we can already use uh, and um, an existing function here. So uh, we're going to use calc additive phenotype, phenotype values again, which is a part of Plinker. And what it does, it counts the number of T's. So it's always uh, 10 as a baseline, but per T you have, it adds 0.5. Uh, if there are two T's, it becomes then 11. And if there are four T's, it even becomes 12. 
but just to demonstrate that this function can handle also multiple SNPs. Um, now we're going to write our own um, custom function that can also do this. Uh, and it's called, we're going to use an apostatic phenotype, which means that it doesn't uh, depend on one locus, but on two low, so it's low size. So you could also call it a multi-SNP trait or perhaps a polygenic trait, um, whatever you prefer. Uh, sure thing is it works on multiple SNPs. So what it does, it takes the, uh, it takes the genetic data and if all, so here it counts if all the, if all the SNPs are T, uh, if this matches the number of columns, so for example in this case there are four T's, and there are also four columns, so in this case it matches, uh, so this trait is determined on two loci, because if you have only T's here, or only T's in the, for the second SNP, then uh, this, uh, th this, there's no change in phenotype, so it counts if there are only T's in all uh, per individual, and then it adds 10 to it, uh, and then we can see, uh, then we have an apostatic trait because it depends on two loci. So we can check if it still works. Yes, it works awesomely. Uh, we we're gonna pretty print it a bit. So here we have our genetic data. Here we have our phenotypes, and only here does it work. So now we're going to do our last custom function, um, which is a bit more, uh, more complex, but uh, it, it is basically the question, like if the phenotype is XOR, exclusive OR, so which means if there are T's here, two T's here, and two A's here, or there are two A's here and two T's there. So it's a bit of an artificial function, uh, but I put it in for demonstrational purposes. So, um, so, so whatever function, whatever custom function you supply, Blinker will check it for uh, a genetic table for one SNP and a genetic table of two SNPs. And in both cases, the function should return something. So although this XOR phenotype depends on at least two SNPs, uh, it does need to return something uh, for one SNP. So that's what it does here. If the genetic table has only one SNP, if there are two uh, SNP calls, then just return tens. Else, so and if there are at least two SNPs, it checks um, if, if the genotype is homozygous for A at locus one, uh, does so here uh, for T at locus one, locus A two, uh, up. and then it uh, checks if uh, both is the case, uh, and then it says, well, if either we have an exclusive OR in this way or an exclusive OR in that way, then we have an exclusive OR which you wanted, and then it adds ten to it. So um, this is how it looks like. So for example, here we have two A's and two T's, so that's an exclusive OR. And here we have two T's, and here we have two A's. So in this video, I've showed you how to write your own custom functions uh, to simulate data using Plinker. And uh, that was about it. So I wish you a very good day. Bye.